Okay, starting with the model number RVL101. This is the non-backwards compatible. With the main difference being the screws on top. Because the GameCube controllers aren't there, it'll be three sets of hidden, or three hidden Phillips screws. Uh, they're hidden under these little square stickers. And usually you can use uh, tweezers. Razor blade works really well. I use the razor blade. So usually I start by removing what hides the screws. So there's one on this face plate. Um, but on the back side that you could set it down on with the little feet. Only the feet towards the back have a tri-wing hidden further in. And then the front face plate has two tri-wings hidden under rectangular stickers on the top and bottom. So that's how it's attached. And then the bottom side. So the way I remember this is one row is Phillips and one row is tri-wing. For, with the exception of this one which is behind the battery but behind the battery is tri-wing with the small Phillips on top so still there will be tri-wing um, and there's also a small Phillips right there you can see it so pretty much the same I'm just going to remove the screws now and show you after that's done. Okay, a few side notes. The faceplate will not come off until you've removed this screw. The tri-wing, which is under the battery. Um, so just remove all the screws first before you start prying anything off. And also on the top side, there will be one screw that is longer on one end. So just keep track of which one is and where that goes. All right, so all the screws are out. Um, if yours is hard to pry off, try not to force it. Um, mine was really hard to get off. Especially these screws can be really tight. Um, but try to gently take off the face plate because it is plugged in. And it removes right here. You can just grab it by the, as close as you can to the connection and get, pull it off. Just like that. And I was able to get this off before removing the face plate. Um, although it had something sticky, so it was kind of hard to get off. But these kind of clip in and just have tabs. And then we should be able to set it down and lift. I believe it's this side up. Harder to do with one hand, of course. Yeah, so it's going to be this top side. I'm going to cut away for one second. Okay, so we've got the plate off. Set that to the side. Clean it. You can actually clean it in the sink if you wanted to. Um, and then this heat, sh heat sink comes right off. Just pop it up same as the other model so it's really no difference here Bam. Um, I suspected this one might have roaches but it actually looks pretty clean and if you wanted to replace the disk drive you would do that the same exact way so it would be 
these four Phillips screws. One, two, and then there's two more right in there. And that just lifts off. So we can go ahead and remove those. So once again, with this, you would also be careful. Um, I believe you could just kind of like flip it over and it should be all right. Um, I kind of lost one screw in there. But you want to pull it a little bit forward, not too far, and then flip it over so that nothing's like really yanking out. And to replace, you would just, this one flips up. Maybe it would be easier to see like that. So flip it up, pull out the ribbon cable, and this one pulls directly out the same way the faceplate one would. So just pull that out. And then bam, you can do your disc drive replacement because they are pretty cheap. What if you have a spare lying around? Um, but that's as far as I'm going to go with this disassembly. Um, you could also repair the or replace the Bluetooth chip from here or fix it if it's not seated correctly. Um, usually I just tear them down to here and then make sure they don't have roaches, clean them up a little bit, and put them back together.